Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do a deep dive on my wedge system with the European night crawlers. So if you're ready to see how I harvest, inspect, and feed up my European night crawlers, stick around. So first what we're going to do is we are going to do a little bit of a harvest here. Just now that this portion here is, is ready, it's dry enough here, shouldn't have any troubles. We'll just kind of tuck all of that undone th stuff in the corner here so they can go back in the feeding zone. We're just going to do a little bit just so that we can move the wedge over and also so I can get some things harvested for my um, fall garden. All right, so if you guys are putting in a fall garden, um, are you starting seeds inside? Let me know or if you're using your worm castings to just start them straight in the ground. I didn't put any seeds in uh, for the fall because I wasn't really sure when the weather was going to start getting cool enough to do root crops again. We kind of been having a weird on again, off again, heat wave, cold, wet, dry. It's been a weird season. So I'm just going to skim off the very top here and maybe get myself, you know, a couple coffee cups worth of castings to add to the group. Now this is a quarter inch screen and as you can see the cocoons do go through. So if I go you know through this again when it's drier I could rescue some of those cocoons uh, but I don't really need to. I think I have enough worms right now. Okay so this stuff here can go back into the feeding zone. Now let me look through here and see what I've got, if the worms are doing their migration or not. <clears throat> we started having trouble with the moisture down in the basement here because it's been about 70% humidity for the better part of the summer. And that really has stopped the castings from drying out. It's been kind of a pain. So I put, you know, fans down here. I've done a lot of stuff to try and help the castings dry out, but I have not had a great deal of luck, especially not in these deeper bins that are very, you know, deep in comparison to other bins. They're almost a foot, and I'll put the metric equivalent in there, but, you know, it's hard to get them to dry out when they're this deep. But this is the wedge method, and it is so much better than other types of bins in many other ways that I'm willing to put up with a couple of inconveniences as far as the drying of the castings goes. All right, so now we're moving over and we're getting into stuff that is not as old. This portion over here has been going for greater than six months and that's why it's, it's nearly ready to harvest here. And it looks like, oh, wow, I think the ginger's finally it's finally done except for the skin. Pumpkin stem is still here from 2021. I think it's 21. Yeah. Currently 2022, that much I know. So I spoke too soon. I think we do still have a little bit of that ginger laugh that's been going on for nine months. Good, good, good. All right, so we're making room here because I do have a bit of a, a larger feeding that's going to need a balance of more bedding than usual. I started to uh, dissolve some food for the worms because it was all dry and then I got sidetracked and forgot about it. So now it is a stinky ugly mess that is going to be needing to be buried super deep. So we're gonna get the castings that are nearly done here, move them over and hopefully the worms will appreciate. Now, what I consider to be, you know, horrible, the worms are going to think is fabulous because it will be closer to something that they'll be able to eat and they don't have to wait around for the bin helpers to help them. So last time we fed coconut and oatmeal, I think, like steel oats or something. And when we looked into the uh, lasagna bin, it had molded really bad and hadn't really made any progress. Now I'm looking at this bin. We haven't been in here for four or five weeks. I'm not, whoa, wow, wow. Okay, well, 
if I wouldn't have messed that up, that would have been a fabulous worm ball. Look at that, guys. I messed up my worm ball. Wow, looks like all of the little wormies are migrating fabulously. It's a little dry, so we will get them some water. I want to make sure that I get this in progress part all moved over before I add this new stuff, because the new stuff is definitely going to need to stay away from this, because I'm probably not going to want to touch it for quite some time. Well, that's great. They did migrate. You can tell this part's done, this is in progress, and then this is the new. And slowly they do their own migration for me. Look at this guy. You can be a big one. Look at that. Good worm. All right, let me get their food. Believe it or not, this is carrots and I got I don't even know what all. In case you're wondering, no, it doesn't smell good. Okay, now let's get them some bedding to cover that up. I also have some bread that needs to, or some tortillas that need to go. So I'm going to kind of make a layer of those and see what they do. I'll put more bedding on top. Been trying to drizzle these in. <clears throat> There's just too many of them. And because I'm adding so much stuff that's going to be very long term, these tortillas will probably be here for a month or two. I'm going to give them some uh, worm chow and hopefully that'll give them something to do. These are European night crawlers, so they are very often interested in the bedding, at least equal to, if not greater than, regular old food that you, you give your red wigglers and your blue worms. European night crawlers like their bedding too. Okay, I am gonna give this a little bit of water here, but the bedding was not, even though it's my prepared bedding, it was not as damp as I'm accustomed to it being. I also think this in progress part here could use a little bit more. Hang on, we've got one more bin of European night crawlers and we're going to have a look at them and see what they're doing. Here we are on the second European night crawler bin. These are the ones that I got from Gatano at Northeast Worms and we were having problems with this being too wet last time. I did set up a, a, a fan in this room to try and dry it out. Sometimes castings will get super sticky if you let them go for too long and I, I have a sneaky suspicion these have been going just a little too long. So I'm going to try and fluff this up a little bit. I'm not going to try and uh, harvest it right now simply because I'm going to have to get fluffing this at a deeper level and unfortunately I'm going to need the drier castings on the top in order to mix with the wetter castings on the bottom. So hopefully, you know, we'll get this straightened out in a couple weeks. But it's been about five weeks since we've looked in on these monsters. And as I can see here, they're not moving out of this side of the bin, which is probably partially because it is still nice moisture level for them to live in. One of the things when you're trying to migrate worms is that it's not just to entice them to move uh, with the food, but also to, you know, negatively impact the environment so that they want to move uh, just in case you got lazy worms. I don't know. So I'm going to continue digging here just for a little bit to make sure that I'm getting all of the stuff at the bottom. And you can tell I'm really struggling here to get all the way to the bottom here because these are so compacted and wet at the bottom. Uh, you know, not getting in here except for maybe once a month is probably not ideal for this deep of a bin. Uh, so let's, you know, I'm going to try and get in here more often. I did come in here about once a week to do a little bit of breaking up the bumps, but I didn't do a deep dive here like I am now. All right, so we fed them the same thing we did the other uh, European night crawlers, And let's see what we got. Like I said, the... The same stuff that we were fed to another bin molded really bad, but I'm not really seeing that here. So maybe it's a difference in a kind of worm, different kind of um, bedding. No, it's not. The, it's the same kind of bedding. It's just a different bin, different kind of worms for sure. Um, last time it was in the the bin that I called lasagna bin. Let's see if we've got a worm ball in this one. We kind of screwed up and didn't get the worm ball because I wasn't paying attention. 
but again this is really kind of dry here and I think when I put the fan in here to dry out the castings that were really wet I didn't do any service to these this part of the bin that is is not all castings yet and castings hold water but ground up paper and cardboard does not uh, hold water very well so give with one hand take away with the other trying to fix the casting screw up the other stuff and you know so just in case you think I'm an expert and I don't make any mistakes um, <laughs> this is not me telling you I'm an expert this is me showing you my chronicle of being a worm farmer from the beginning and uh, mistakes will be made quite honestly and I absolutely do make them not keeping this you know wanting to dry this out ended up drying this out where the worms were so uh, lesson learned okay all right let's get them some food as well I'm gonna put the rest of this in here I think there was some melon too so we are also going to give them a huge amount of bedding to cover up with because that food is stinky and I do not want any flyer buys to think this is a good place to live okay they are also going to get some of the tortillas which classically are difficult to feed because they they dry out or mold or whatever I think these are some crackers just gonna spread them out and then hopefully entice the worms over here with a little bit of my worm chow and this is I'll put the recipe out there but it's it's oatmeal and flour and a couple of other things depending upon what I have around okay more bedding on top of here make sure everything gets covered and uh, we don't want to get any visitors in my area when the farmers start harvesting the corn and everything the mice want to come into your house so I want to make sure that they don't smell it either let me know if you have pest problems in your area what do you do about it um, how do you keep your worm farms free of pests Alright, that looks like that is going to do it for that one. If you like this series, I'll link the playlist over here and you can watch these grow from the beginning where it was one pound of European Nightcrawlers and the other one started out as 500 cocoons. Alright guys, well if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody, have a good day.